This week what I want to do is talk about healthy families. We are getting so much time with our families right now, hey? So let me, let me make a statement. I believe that what we do right now with our families is going to impact our nation in a greater way than this COVID-19 virus. Did you hear me? Uh, let me say it again. I believe that what we do in our families, with our families, in building our families right now, is going to have a greater impact on our nation than COVID-19. Honestly, now that may be difficult for you to say, looking at what, you know, to say that, looking at what's going on right now, but I want you to understand how powerful of a moment we are in for our families. So let me help you with some real creative ways to uh, build the family and assure a healthy family coming out of this. One of the things we said last week was, I wanna come out of this better than I came into this. And so let's deal with the family. First of all, let me make this statement. I believe that the family is the greatest evangelism tool for the church in the history of the world. Doesn't that sound uh, uh, crazy, uh, like, like a large statement, kind of fantastic to say? But let me say it again, and I'm gonna build a case for this. I believe the family is the greatest evangelism tool that the world has ever seen in the church. The problem is the family has not been a priority. I mean, think about this. The family is in every community on the planet. The family is in every community on the planet. There isn't a place in the world today where there isn't a family, okay? The family unit, human, hu humanity. So think about that. There may not be a government in the farthest reaches of the corners of this world. There may not be a school or an educational system. There may not be uh, business or commerce, but one thing that is assured in every uh, community on this, on this planet is that the family will exist. And so wouldn't it make sense that a healthy family is the greatest way to reach our globe for Christ? I mean, think about it. It doesn't cost anything. There's no cost to the church for healthy families. I mean, maybe commitment and sacrifice and obedience, right? But we don't have to raise money to set up tents or have crusades or build a better website, bring in a guest speaker. No, no, no. Every community has a, has a family represented in it as, as a key to the system, to the context, to the culture of that area and that region, okay? So, so what can we do? What can we do? Uh, number one, I believe that healthy marriages create healthy families. Healthy marriages create healthy families. And so when our children see a healthy marriage, when our children see us communicating and honoring and respecting, when they see authority in the home, through a healthy marriage that builds a healthy family. Now, I realize that there are many people, um, we are raising uh, about half is what uh, Barna Research has told us, about half of marriages end in divorce, 51% uh, actually. And uh, it's about the same in the church as it is in the world. It's not much better. Um, although the trend is trending. So if you look at the trends, uh, marriages are lasting longer. Uh, second marriages are not. Those are uh, being broken up or, or disintegrated at a 70% rate, okay? So maybe you come uh, from a home that's, uh, that's not a traditional home or a classic home. Maybe you come from a blended home. Maybe your family is a single mom or a single dad raising the family. I, I have uh, great friends in that setting who are model parents, you know. And so maybe it's not the marriage in that setting that is raising the children and, um, you know, and some of these other things that we're gonna say, but maybe it's a uh, single parent, okay? So first of all is parenting or the, the marriage. Number two, family table. 
Oh man, I love this one. This was a blast at our home. Like the family dinner table was something that we did two or three nights a week. We couldn't do it every night of the week because our kids were busy, they were in sports and they were involved in youth group and all of that other stuff, right? Everything that goes on. But we did make it a priority for two or three nights a week when our kids and we sat down together and we had family devotions at the table. I always did it uh, at the end of the meal so that the, we get the kids talking, get that excitement going, and then we would do a video or we'd read a book or we'd, uh, you know, we'd do a lesson and we'd switch that out. As the kids got older, they would do it. Or, or um, you know, one of, the, one of the things that my kids uh, understood is we had a rule at the table that you could talk with food in your mouth. <laughs> you might say, no, hey, quiet, you know, right? Because they're talking and food's coming out. No, 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 listen, that's, that's, that builds a better atmosphere, right? So our rule was you can talk with food in your mouth. So maybe you want to establish that. And, you know, one of the things you could do is go through the Alpha Series or, or do soap together. You know, the SOAP program, you know, I'll put that in the notes. You'll see the manuscript and you will, uh, you'll be able to follow up with that if you're not familiar with those are, okay? But there's nothing like that conversation that takes place at the family table. All right, number three. Number three is uh, sibling relationships. Sibling, brother-sister relationships. You know, something has happened in our culture, in our society over the last I'm just going to say 25 years, okay? I grew up with brothers and sisters, brothers, uh, two brothers and a sister. And they made sure, we made sure that each other was straight, okay? That they were like, uh, you know, not go, wandering off to the right or to the left, that, that they weren't with the wrong crowd, that they weren't doing something stupid. Now, it was probably a little more difficult for my siblings because I wasn't like the best kid, but... Anyway, I can remember my I can remember my older sister saying things like, "Hey, you shouldn't hang out with that person," right? Or when I was if I would be interested in dating someone, she'd be like, mm, "No, you know." And that's that protectiveness. I can remember beating up my brother, my two brothers who were younger than me, because nobody else could, but I could. <laughs> it's kind of a right of being an older sibling, right? And so I want you to think this through: the sibling relationship. When the sibling relationship is healthy, the family is healthy. And it does, the impact of healthy brothers and sisters is amazing to watch. It, it really is. It's something that is a safety for them because they can talk to each other. Maybe when they can't, don't feel totally comfortable talking to a parent. Or they, you know, there's no, their friend group has let them down and their squad is not the right person to talk. When they can talk to an older brother or sister, Man, uh, that is so encouraging to see that. You know, I watched a video this week and it was of a, uh, a young girl in, in, in a home who has cancer and she had lost her hair. And I don't know if maybe you saw this too, but man, I, must, I think I watched it eight or 10 times. And it, the, the, the little girl uh, who had cancer, who had lost her hair, was with her sister. And they were recording, doing makeup and all this stuff. And the older sister shaved her head also. You know, you've seen that happen. Friends do that often and, uh, you know, in those settings. But what, it was so beautiful to watch as the older sister began then to shave her eyebrows. And the little girl, who, you know, the younger sister started crying and they hugged this. And I watched it a few times and lost it. Okay, so, yeah. Sibling relationships are so positive and so powerful. Um, let me give you a fourth one. So number one was uh, marriage, healthy marriages and parenting. Number two was the family table, uh, conversations at the family table. Number three is that sibling relationship, and the power of brothers and sisters. Uh, man, I wish we could spend more time on that. I I'll blog on that and give you some more ideas on how to get them talking and how to get them along with each other, how to get them alone with each other, right? And then uh, number four in building healthy families that build healthy communities is family recreation, uh, vacations. Man, it's almost like a, a thing we don't do. Staycations, doing something just in your area, you know, in, around the area for a daycation, 
okay? Those kind of things build memories. Okay, here, listen, do you have uh, a time where you uh, go out and play with the kids, right? When you're playing baseball and you're playing basketball with the kids and you're skating with the kids, you know, or you're just doing chalk with the kids, something like build memories that are recreational. Attend a, a, a sporting event, attend a sporting event. So exciting to be in that setting. To, you know, you get to meet other parents and all that. So anyway, re recreation. I think that can be a great way to build memories. You know, let me get real practical with that too. Uh, and I'll blog on this too. I'll put this in the manuscript to make sure that you, you uh, hear how we did it. We built a uh, memory box for each of our kids. And through the years, uh, <laughs> uh, Jane, many of you know my wife passed away. Um, uh, about four years ago, but through the years, Jane would take pictures of the kids and memory things, you know, and medals and honors and, and, uh, and ribbons, and we would put them in the box. And my two oldest have their box. We, I've given that to them, and they, they can go over and see all the little certificates and things that they got. And my youngest, I still have his. I've got to give that to him yet, but uh, when he gets his family, that'll happen. And I'm telling you, to go, th go over the years and the incredible memories of, of uh, what took place is, is so healing and so powerful. Um, okay, finally, number five, community. When the family is involved in the community, things happen. I mean, you get to witness in, your, in the neighborhood. You get to witness at ball games. You get to witness when you're volunteering for Thanksgiving. We used to volunteer on Thanksgiving. We'd go buy groceries and then bring them to someone's house. So my kids could see that. I want them to see that the family is involved in the civil setting where we live and in the regional setting where, we're, where we live as we volunteer and as we get involved at the school. You know, there are so many ways to do that. And, you know, one of the things that, um, that is a plus for those of you that maybe have kids that are in art, in the arts, in fine arts, or in athletics, is you get, it's a way to be a witness amongst the uh, team moms and dads and, you know, all the families that are there watching the soccer game, or right? All of those moments add into a family's community impact. All right, so, hey, I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, you know where to find us right down there is our addresses and how you can get into this uh, more and see some more of the specifics. But anyway, thank you again for joining us.